This handsome young West Point cadet was to go on to become one of the most important military leaders in U.S. history, as well as a prominent inventor who changed the course of our country. Born in Lapeer County, Michigan, he is none other than General George O. Square, or Squire as most people pronounce his name. He was quite a character and a great man, and I'm surprised so many people have not heard of him. His mother was Emily Gardner Squire, who died when he was seven years old. His father, Almon Squire, sent him to live with his grandparents at their farm in Dryden, which was a common practice for children who lost their mother back then. After graduation from West Point with his degree in engineering and physics, he was assigned to the Signal Corps. Some of his biggest accomplishments included integrating technology into the armed forces, setting the Air Corps in motion to get that started. He was the first army officer to fly in an airplane as a passenger. He also developed a modern telegraph system called the duplex system, where telegraph lines could be operated with more than one signal at the same time. People could send and receive telegraphs simultaneously without having to wait for one person to finish using the system. And that's really the basis of our whole cell phone and internet system that we use today. So you could say he helped found the internet with his technological advances. And here he is working on one of his machines. He also invented streaming music. That's right. You owe all of your streaming services to his idea to provide music via cable to various businesses and organizations. And that company is still in business. You might have heard of it. Music. He received an honorary knighthood and he received multiple honors for his accomplishments throughout the world. He even had a ship named after him during World War II. He never married and had no children, but he had a country estate in Dryden, Michigan that he left to the people of Lapeer County. He referred to it as the People's Country Club. This building is known as Forest Hall, which has been used as a meeting it has been well maintained in its rustic original design and is still in use today. Also still located on the property is one of the two original cabins or cottages, as well as the lookout tower, which is a two-story edifice behind this in the woods near the sledding hill. And of course, the original building on property, which was a reconstructed mill. The mill predates the general's ownership of the property and was actually burned down in a fire, but it was rebuilt and continued to function during his ownership. And it was part of the land that was given to the people of Lapeer County for the park. As over the years, the park has expanded with a huge playground and a water park facility. See, it's, it's very nicely done, although sadly it hasn't opened the last few years because of the virus, budget concerns, and staffing issues. But it is still maintained, and hopefully someday soon they'll be able to get it open again for the local people to enjoy. The whole property itself, though, is beautiful to enjoy. Stop by and hike or check out. And here's the um, historic plaque that's up by Forest Hall. You can come up yourself and check out the property, wander around and thank this great American general for his contributions to the military and science and his humanitarian efforts as well. In his later years, he spent time at his winter home in St. Augustine, Florida, but he never lost his love for the rural lifestyle here in Lapeer County. He's buried with military honors at Arlington National Cemetery. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the life of this great man and that you might take some time to do some more research and study a little bit more about his life and times and what he actually did. He was quite a fascinating person. Thanks for watching and have a great day.